Don't you know that the music should be... All right. Theo? Theo? Yeah? Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Listen, I'm still outside. Kyla? <laughs> still in the forest. Like, I'm still in the forest. <laughs> Um, but I, I'm about to go back into my shed, my beautiful shed up here in Western Canada yeah. next week, for sure. For sure. I'm almost done the Kyla quarantine, but hi buddy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I was just, uh, you and I were, were pre-talking about the, these, these wild kids nowadays. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm good. I'm, I'm, the kids will be, uh, home soon and, and it'll be absolute chaos. And uh, I got my Wu-Tang shirt on. Yeah, I see that. I like your hat, too, to even though. Are we going to have an NFL season? Like, seriously, are we going to? Well, I'm going to tell you something. As a lifelong Oakland Raider fan. Yeah. How do you feel about that Vegas I thing? Like, I got to see. I'm one of these people. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're going to disagree with me because I know my sister completely disagrees with me. I, as, she, as she should. As she should. I'm not a fan of Vegas, Las Vegas. It's not for me. It's for some people, my you, sister you, being one of them. You remember, you and me and our boy Dana, and we'd go, like yeah. three fights, front yeah. row. Yeah. And you and me trying to get back to our hotel room, we had to have 50 bodyguards to let it. No, juice, tig, no, oh my, one yeah. drunk liquor. No. Oh. It's like when you think about my nightmare, this is why I don't go to like big group things. I don't go to concerts. I don't do any of that stuff. And I'm unapologetic about it. It's just not for me. There's certain things that are for people. It's not for me. It's okay. Um, Vegas is not for me. I don't, I'm not a huge gambler. Uh, I like it's, I could take it or leave it. It doesn't mean anything to me. I don't drink. I don't like crowds. So why go? What's, I what's think. I think the last time you went to a concert might have been with me when we saw Eminem in L.A. That is the last concert I went to, Eminem and, uh, Eminem and Rihanna. And they, they literally uh, hustled us in. Yeah. We had that little spot where we fanced off. Yeah. He was amazing. He wanted Eminem. to meet us afterwards, but he yeah. had to split and run. His manager, Thousands Ro of Rosenberg, was with us. Yeah. Rosenberg yeah. runs yeah. Def Jam yeah. Records now. Yeah, yeah. Rosenberg yeah. runs that was, Def Jam. That was amazing. That, that was, was a long time night. ago. Long time so, ago. Point is, the Raiders have now become the Las Vegas Raiders. It's tough for you. And you're kind of used to that. You're, you're a giant hockey fan. Everybody knows that. Hockey teams move all over the place. Uh -huh. like the, not, as much, not as much as they used to, but new ones come on now. Well, the Avalanche new ones come on used now. to be somebody else. Quebec right? Nordique. They used to be the Quebec Nordique. The and Winnipeg Canadians, Jets went down. They've always Canadi been the Canadians. They're don't, still don't, there. Yeah, don't don't try and pretend you think you know anything about no, hockey. Patrick so, Roy was with the Canadians. Correct. And then he went to Colorado. He just got and traded. That wasn't the team. The team. You're talking about traded. teams. Yeah, yeah. Greatest goalie to ever play, some might say. No, but he was no. good. No, but he was very good. John Van Boy, when, when they when they when they jumped like ten goals on him, and the coach kept him in, and. They just kept him in, and they just, he was like a rented goalie. He was like Mona in between the pipes. And they just kept putting him behind him, putting him behind him. And they looked over that bench, and when the, when the game was over, he skated to the bench and said, I'll never play for you again, ever. And he never did. He got traded the next day. You're out. Wow. See you later. Colorado. So the point is, I don't know when the NFL comes back how I'm going to feel about the Las ah, Vegas yeah. Raiders. Yeah. Um, do they still have the same uniforms and shit, do you know? I think so. I don't know. Everybody's changing everything now. I don't know. Uh, sports are so tremendously weird. different than when we were younger. It's crazy. So weird. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. it just like everything else. But what isn't different is the Reaper reviews that we're doing right now. That's not Here we go, baby. Which, Which one are we doing, R. Theo? Which one are we so doing? We're doing season two, episode three. We did episode two last week. We're doing episode three. Who says we don't go in order? Who says we that, don't go in order? What a genius idea because it made it, made it easier for me. You know what I mean? Like one to the next, we don't have to jump around too much. Good for me. It's good for my head. Don't Love get it. used to it. Don't get used I'm to not. it. I'm not. We're doing it. We're going everywhere. We're going everywhere. But, but again, what we've, and, and I need people to understand this. In the beginning, for our own sanity, we are staying within the first three seasons. Yeah. So at least there's good. some similarity. Good. Right? 
Um, Good. And we're, do- we're doing some really uh, pinnacle episodes from the first three seasons, and then we'll do the filler ones and jump in there. Not yeah, that yeah. Filler. And then we're going to go to four, five, six. Oh. Seven's going to have its own mountain. When we're old and gray and we're doing seven, seven's going to, well, you're already old and gray, but seven's going to I, But I die certain things. I won't say what, but you know, just for men goes a long way. I need way. to. I'm getting the grays up. No, there. you don't. You, you were worried about that 10 years ago. Coatsy, look at my gray. I said, I pull call, it out. Pull I it call, out. I called you Dorian Gray the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I still got all my hair. I can't believe it. It's all that matters. So, so uh, episode three, season two, fix. Fix. Did you ever think? Um, obviously, they're all named for something. And and after we discuss this, maybe we'll find. Well, we'll find out what fix is. So, it opens up with our boy. He's back. It's Elvis. the funniest. <laughs> no, it's the fun. No, it's the funniest thing. I'd like to. I got to call Boone. I haven't talked to him in about a month. I need to call him and just ask him what he really felt about Elvis. Like, what, do you, what did you really feel about putting that shit on? Because I know he was excited about it from the pilot. But then we just yeah. kind of, you, you brought this up in one of the, we just we kind of lost it a little. We lose it over the years. When did but here we he, it? Uh, I think maybe, well, there's maybe one now. in, there's another one in the first season, which we haven't seen yet where he pops up. So this, this might be the, the end of Elvis. I, I, I'm not sure. But what, a, what an ending, if it is. I mean, Booney. I mean, I just wrote down he should have a spinoff. There should be a spinoff show. He Elvis was so Booney. into it at the bar mitzvah. I'd it's watch classic. every show. It's so good. And he you was know. giving it. Now, question again, was he singing? Well, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I, I don't I think know. He, I think he got looped again. Got I'm not looped. sure. I'm not sure. So I shouldn't say. But I know Booney. He's my brother. I know him. So do you. Yeah. I don't know if that's his if that's his voice. I think he got looped. I think he got looped. But he'll probably he definitely will tell you that he sings better than that loop. So Oh no, no, no. <laughs> so he is and I can hear him saying <laughs> all of that. He's like, I should have just kept me in there. Fucking loop sucks. So, okay. So after the loop, if you remember what we said last week, I told you how there was a reference to Adriana and the Sopranos played by Dre DiMatteo. Well, here we go again. Mad Men reference in the porn <sighs> studio. The how do you know all that shit, Theo? Because you I got time attention. to watch all these movies and Mad oh, Men. Like- Maggie Siff was on Mad Men. Oh, was she? Okay, she was that before she was right. on Sun. She was on Mad Men. Ooh. I just said Maggie's turning into a bit of a Katie Seagal outside of the Sons of Anarchy world. Let me tell you what I mean by that. There are certain actors in this game, and you know them all. We've had the fortune of being with two of them. It is very hard to have multiple hit shows. Doesn't happen. Okay, ready? You can have a hit show. Sons of Anarchy is a hit show. It's, it's in the Zydeo guys. Big it's, hit. It's, 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 you know, in the museums. It's the one. Yeah. There's a few of those. There's also other hit shows throughout the... Katie has Married with Children, Sons of Anarchy. Eight Simple Rules, but John passed in the middle of it. Ritter John and passed, that. and that would have been yeah. massive. Yeah. My yeah. favorite actor... You worked with him, right? Ritter. With Ooh, no, met him. Oh, a lovely, right. beautiful man. The greatest. Okay. Maggie now has, she was on Mad Men. She wasn't a regular. Maybe she was a regular, but she was on Mad Men. Sons, and now Billions, which is a giant show. Huge. The person who, to me, has the most, and I'm probably wrong, but it's okay. I'm going to keep it in my mind. Jimmy Smith's L.A. Law. Oh, yeah. NYPD, NYPD Blue. Blue. West Wing. Oh, yeah. He's fucking huge Sons on that. Sons of Anarchy. And now he's on something else. But, I, but again, those a, are a lawyer really show. huge ones. Huge show, yeah. Like the ones that, like, if the, I don't know the new one he's on, but those are ones that go in the annals of, you know, if that's the right word, into TV history. So we know, like, you, you, you know, Bad Blood is such a big show, but there was only two seasons. Luke Cage, such a right. big show, but only two seasons. Right, two like seasons. If they, if they had seven seasons. Kept going, ago, for sure, we'd be in there, yeah. Then you go, oh, there's two shows. So Mad Men, the reference to her, which also to me was so funny because 
Shibs and I are there. And, and did and you see what she did? With the bottle. Did you see what, no, with the chips. Oh. See, what I noticed was, here's Tommy, again, edge of frame Tommy, just always wanted to be in everything, no matter if he had, just edge of frame, and there he is, it's his shot with you. He offers you chips, and he just slapped his hand away. Like, no, I'm looking at, no. And here's, like, he just wanted more, and you went, no, no chips yeah. for me. And I thought, wait a minute, that's before Theo became this cut, 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 cut. He was yeah. still a warrior. He was yeah. still a Popeye. Big dude. You, just, you just brushed him right off. Funny, so funny, fun no, funny shit, dude. That's we funny. were trying to figure out how we can make this work. And we were like, how can we make this funny as opposed to just sitting here? So we had all this food and we had yes, it did. so <laughs> stupid. Because again, back then you get so little time on screen that you're like, I got to do something here. I got to make it, but I also have to keep it grounded in reality. <laughs> even though there's this porn star sticking a bottle in some guy's ass. Like this you, is you, you know what? Yeah. But what was it called? It was called Anal Whispers or something, that movie? I don't, Anal, I don't, uh, I'm I, not sure. It doesn't Mad matter. Men or it was a spin on Mad Men, but it yeah. definitely had to hurt whatever it was. Um, okay. <laughs> like had to. He had to get sick or something had to happen. So, um, okay. Then we go to the Gemma scene. Gemma's lashing out at Clay at the table. And all I, I have a question for you. Go ahead. Because only you would know this. Did we have a bird wrangler? Okay, I have a question about this because I'm I work I, I I'm on the board of these couple of animal groups and all that and I understand we did have a bird wrangler, we did. So because I was never in any of those scenes, neither were you. Like in the bedroom, yeah. Clay, Gemma. Yeah. I was. We 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 all had dinner once in a while, and me and Gemma yeah. had a couple. I saw the, the bird, bird, but who did we have a wrangler? I never we met did. him or her. Did we? we? Did. That's wow. why the bird wasn't there a lot. Okay, cool. Poor bird's <laughs> taking smoke in every scene. Smoking it. Yeah, and, and he charged a lot of money. He made a lot of money, so they couldn't afford the bird too many times. So they yeah. had to make sure that the bird would come occasionally in the house. I think I think I think the bird again, who's ever listening, I I don't fucking know. But I think the bird <laughs> might I think the bird went away towards the end, right? Was the bird no idea. Okay. We're gonna find we're gonna find out. I don't, I never had a scene with the bird. Neither did I. Okay. Not that I remember. <laughs> had a lot of scenes with dolls, but not a bird. Not a bird. But Gemma noticed the positioning of their seats. She's at one end of the table. Yeah, good for you, other. dude. What a great way to shoot a scene, right? Long table, short and, distance. And beautiful. And I noticed, I'm sure you did too, that Gemma had no bruise left on her face. Sorry. And then it gets and then it gets no and then it gets said right after that, it's three weeks later. Answer or somebody goes, it's been three weeks since. So right away, Sutter going make sure this is like some time three weeks since the horrible horrible mm -hmm. thing that happened to her and so we can get rid of that bruise we can get rid of this still the pain dealing with stuff as we will see but no bruise i thought wow cool three weeks later there we go yeah and it's funny a lot of that i also thought was like just we don't want people sitting in makeup too long like we got to get moving like get rid of the bruise you don't need it you know and a lot of it is i've always been the longest stretch of time between any moment in Sons of Anarchy was when we went to prison. There prison. A year and a half between season three and four. And that's four. When, that's Correct. When I lost all the weight. That's when yep. I, uh, I had grown my hair. I had, yep. Everything had changed. Yep. And that's also the year we did all those little vignettes of, you know, we did yeah. those sub episodes. That Ryan now, directed one. Yeah, exactly. Year and a half. Most episodes, some when it ends, the next one starts. Some are three weeks apart. I would love to see like a timeline of how many years and how long seasons one to seven are. Do you have any idea? No. Okay, me neither. Somebody knows this. So whoever knows that, if they can do a visual timeline for me. But put that, it on Theo's Instagram or my Twitter or both. We would love that. How much time in like weeks, like now you just said, I didn't even notice that. You said three weeks. Okay. Do that for every episode and every end of season. I would love to know how long this whole thing is. And I would love to know if Katie had a different hairstyle beginning every season. Like, did you notice that about Katie? She just kept changing Gemma up. Like she just kept, you know, like I had my own things. Like when, when, when Dawn dies, which we'll talk about later on another episode, 
I wanted a whole new beginning. I wanted bangles to, to Don Traeger, DT on my, I wanted different stuff. Tig changed his look because he was in a very dark place. She, she changed her hair, her look. It just got sexier and sassier every season, mm -hmm. it seemed to me. But that'd be a good thing. Let's find out. Is it like... Yeah, when you know the way that works, shows get money, you know, things start to change. I think Tommy at one point was wearing Gucci and, uh, and whatever else he was wearing. Unbeknownst to a lot of people, <laughs> but they put it on his tab. Yeah, like those sunglasses. I had, I had 10 of them. What? I went the opposite way. I got rid of everything. I, as you the did, episode, I had no, you got rings. more and more naked, man. No, you got, I had you nothing. Took... All I wanted was a white t-shirt or a black t-shirt and a pair of Carhartts and nothing else. I didn't care. I didn't want anything else. I wanted, I had the new tattoos on my chest. I had the <sighs> tattoo under my Mohawk and I wanted, I didn't want anything in my trailer. When you would walk in your trailer, it looked like a pawn shop. Like there was like, it was a pawn shop. It was a, and... it was a porn pawn shop is what it was. <laughs> I had knives, I had rings, I had Everything. pictures, I had shit I don't want any everywhere. Of that. I don't want any of that. I want to come in, I want to just nothing. So it could be as, like, I just wanted my cut, I wanted one t-shirt, I wanted one pair of pants, I, the same thing every day. I, and I, and I'm, I'm going to say it now, and I'm going to say it again months from now, but none of us will ever forget the photo shoot going into the final season. You were not a part of the sun's photo shoot. Of course you were there. Of course you were there. You had your own, own solos. My own solo. And I remember I was with Charlie. And we went outside having a puff, went outside and we looked over and you were like 20 feet away. You had your hoodie on, you were juice, you were Theo, you were sitting there and we didn't say a thing, but we looked at you and went, that's where this season is fucking going. The loneliness of all of us by the time this is done is going to be so palpable. We're going to all feel it. And that was so weird. But that's where we were on such a big ass hit show. So, yeah, Juicy Pants got rid of everything. It was amazing. So, like you said, but I mean, you know, and Gemma and a lot of people did change their looks up. Okay. So, uh, Unser, trying to get Gemma to go to a group meeting. She says, You think I'm the type of person to go to a holy poor me circle jerk? One of the greatest lines ever. 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 A that's holy the, that, poor me circle jerk. No, no, that's the, again, Sutter and his team of writers, they come up with the funniest in dark moments stuff to say. That is something Gemma would say. And again, she, in her, like any, she should be going, right? But that's the whole thing. And, and here Unser comes in and says all this. Is that right about the time in the episode you have written down where uh, Tig walks in on her and scares her? Or is that right before it? No, that, that um, I do have it written down. Uh, it's coming up in this, in this episode. It, it's not there yet because I, I got it written down somewhere. Did you notice how amazing, was it Clea? What's her name who played Nina? Yeah. The, the, I think it was Clea. The gal who takes, that yeah. takes care uh, yeah, Cleo King. She's Cleo King. She played Nita. Amazing. And 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 again, she was only in three episodes. Amazing. And and I remember her. Uh, she was so grounded. And again, that 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 subtle when when in the second or maybe it's in this one, where uh, Unser comes to get uh, her, and maybe it's, it doesn't matter. Where she would look, uh, Nita would look at Gemma, knowing. Something very bad has happened yes. to her. Yeah, I'm here for you. I'm going to yeah. take the baby. I, I think that was in the last episode we talked about last week. But anyway, yeah. subtle, beautiful stuff. No, she and, and, and just an incredible actor. And again, I think that, you know, the actors that truly shine because the club is such a big group of characters, meaning like just their personalities are so big and there's so much going on there that a lot of the uh, guest star recurrence that come in, the way they shine a lot is that they're so grounded in reality that you don't forget them. She was so good in that, and she's such so a true. tremendous so, actress. Um, so true. Okay. Clay makes Bobby the bookkeeper. I totally forgot about that, that Bobby was great with numbers and kind of all that stuff. He was our secretary. He was our beautiful Jewish secretary. That's, yeah. that's the Bobby Elvis, man. He was, the, he was so good with numbers. Now, did, did Perlman, was he pumping up his arms with a pump? Like, like, the, is, <laughs> His arms are massive, like Ronnie. Massive. 
what what the hell hellboy before hellboy or was that did he do hellboy before sons he must have did he did hellboy before sons which is why i know they were so okay. hot to replace okay you know you with him and he was uh you know ronnie's like a gold he was gym rat he wears that gold gym shirt every day you know? he'd pump iron all day long i'm just going what the hell he does all the curls. Yeah. He doesn't, no he legs. Does the, uh, There's no legs. Yeah. He just does curls. There aren't, there aren't. Well, we saw him riding his bike. There's no legs. Wow. All arms. That's coming up. So, okay. So, Clay makes Bobby the bookkeeper. Um, again, funny. We, funny. Funny shit. God. Luann. Luann. The whole storyline with Luann. Again, the auto connection. Her being a porn star of the past. Her trying to run a business. It all brings this comedy, and yet it also brings this kind of drama, it, and it starts this whole Cara Cara storyline. Um, the Luann stuff, I thought was, I just think it's really like a cool wrinkle that we put in on top of like we're, we're dealing with this white supremacist, whatever the you know racist whatever dudes are, and then at the same time we're kind of offsetting it with porn over here with the Luann stuff, and it was there's so many things that can happen, which we've come to find out inside of that Cara Cara thing that I just thought was, uh, I thought the Luann stuff was pretty cool. And then also she's Gemma's best friend. Well, and can, I, and, and can I add to that? I forgot. I kept, when I kept watching episode two last week and now episode three today, when I watched it last night, I kept wondering why is Deidre so freaked out? Like, why is she so freaked out about getting involved? Like we're trying to help her. I forgot that she's, pawning some of the cash i forgot the whole and we'll get to that like we'll so get when to you, that. Yeah. When, and but, but as an actor i did watching a, a show for the first time what she played was something that she'd been told to make sure you're aware of because this is and the way she played it was so pure and angst ridden and so against the club for trying to help i didn't know why well then we figure out why okay there you go yeah, and, and again, that's where this whole full storyline that they created for her. I mean, he, you know, I was thinking, I'm like, here I am. I'm on the show for two seasons at this point. You didn't know shit about Juice. We know everything about her, you know, and that's the thing that was, that would happen. <laughs> it's amazing, right? Yeah, but Sutter, Sutter knew that, you know, characters from four through 10 on the call sheet, we've got five to seven years to find it all out. Right. But these pops, these pops, they better be juicy. They better be. We got to know everything about you right now because you, you're probably not coming back. Right. Or maybe might, a couple more times. be around. And, and then I also felt like a lot of it was like a tryout too. Like they would come on and uh, uh, if it worked, it worked. And then he'd continue the line, you know. And if it didn't, well, it just kind of goes away, right? And, and we'll deal with a lot of that. Uh, in the future, which I felt some things got set up. Yeah, yeah. And just kind of went away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Tig, drive it. Go ahead. Can I, can I ask a question? Why did Tommy, greatest actor on the planet, wear gloves inside all the time? Like, and, and uh, did you notice that about Tommy? Yeah, I remember. Was there a he, reason? Yeah. What was, was this for reason? Fingerprints. He, he didn't know, uh, but we all, do you remember we had this incredible, and what? We'll, We'll talk about this when we talk about the first show of, of season two. You know, you remember that really well with the guns outside when we were in the Correct. bed. We'll talk about that when we talk about it. But we had a meeting. I remember having a meeting with everybody. We were all there and, and we, Sutter, hell, and we talked about it and we and we went, okay, to suspend belief, that's what we wanted. We, we want to make sure that everyone is not even worrying about, now, if, if we wore gloves all the time, all the time, then we got to wear them all the time. Correct. But if we just had them on when we're robbing or we're, then, oh, that, that, then that's, we'll do just that because it's too crazy. But Tommy really liked wearing those gloves. He did, I, but Tommy has such a unique style, not just in his own life, but who he is. I mean, Tommy would spend almost whole episodes in his hoodie up. You know, yeah. uh, glasses. So like that's that. just the way that, that's just that's what just he did. Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. And, I mean, in his real life, you, he looks like, you know, he looks like a baron when you see him. He, he, he's, he's got like, a scarf and his yeah, hair's yeah, perfect now. God, he looks good. On. Yeah. And and I, I know it's in this episode. It might be coming up or maybe we've already gone over it because I'll let you get back to what you're doing. But Tommy, <laughs> again, riding a motorcycle. Nine times out of ten. Great. We're in our for, We're in our formation. Tommy knows where the camera is. He's only got one hand on the bike. Another, one of those cool looking fucking James Dean shots. He's got one arm down by his side. 
and one arm on the bike. Yeah. And I and I would I I, I don't I would never see it because Tommy was behind me. But when I would see a certain cut, I go, "What are you What are you doing?" I know. He goes, "What do you mean? Put your hands on your bike." He goes, "I don't need to." Copy that. Okay, <laughs> that's that's how Tommy rolls. Like you said, he's a baron. He's a he's a, he's a yeah, punk. Yeah, and I think and he's we, brilliant. Yeah, we used to listen. I you know I was guilty of in my own personal life, and I'm glad this is probably why I don't really ride as much anymore at all. Is you know because I was getting so lackadaisical in my safety, um, as in. You well, know, you became a good rider, and so you felt you could. And I would, and I would give I would you do shit all would, the time. Yeah, I would listen to music at a very high level, right? And I would layer my little brain bucket, they call it. You know, I wasn't wearing the full face. And I would ride with no hands a lot of the times. I would be riding, you know, 100 and some miles an hour. I'd take my hands off, and I'd be, like, looking at something. Like, what am I doing? And again, it, it, that was and, – and Tommy was just always – that's Tommy. That's who he is. He's truly an enigma, and, and I, they could do – 73 documentaries on Tommy and people still wouldn't believe it. He is. Yeah. 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 There is no one in the world like him. And I no. can't even explain him when people ask me about him. I'm no. like, he is just Tommy. No. Yeah. Um, and he's the most loving human being in the world. And that's, in the world. And I love him. Um, okay. Speaking of riding, you come riding out of, uh, out of that garage, you know, uh, with your, with your, your Telemaro shirt on under your cut. We so happy, so proud. Like, why? I mean, I know, I know Ron's going to be in trouble. Clay's going to get in trouble. I got to go protect him. It's kind of funny, and I love all that shit. But tell her more. Like, what the hell? Whip it off. I mean, they were dresses. They were like, like a dress. Or that things. looked like a movie. Mine was yeah, so yeah, it was long. all the way down. It was a full smock. A smock, it was they a, used to call it. <laughs> it was a full smock. Yeah. And then, and then what's funny is you got me and uh, Chibs on the bike, and Clay comes and says something. He's in a bad mood because of Gemma. And then we, we get back to that little quick comedy where I'm like, I think he was talking to you. No, 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 no. I, I, I have to say, <laughs> I, I mean, when I say I hate when mommy and daddy fight, and then he yells at you, and he and you go. I'm pretty sure he was talking to you. <laughs> I mean, I, I I just that's the fucking shit that was so beautifully yeah. intertwined with the seriousness of the yeah. scenes, and it was funny. That's and the you show I loved. Loved it. You yeah. loved that. Who did? That's the show I, mean, I love. Seriously, that, 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 that there's nothing to me. It's the theater mass of pain and joy. It's there's nothing better to me in theater and in movies and television, any form of art where you can go from one extreme to the other so fast that in the so fast. misery and in the, in the drama and the high intensity that you can make people laugh. We, we, were the, we, were the, we were the best chocolate in Belgium, this show, for doing that. We had the best chocolate in Belgium. We did that so fucking well, from serious to funny, serious to funny, then really, really serious, then really, really funny, then yeah. ending on serious, like all show long. Got less and less as we went along with the comedy. That was pure comedy. Shows, shows don't do that anymore. And again, I'm not one who, um, like, do you watch? Yeah, why not? TV? Why not? Watch no, any I, TV? I, a little bit, a little bit here and there. Why can't they anything. mix it up? Why, why, what's wrong with being fearful of being funny or being, I don't get it. I don't, I don't really watch. I want the last thing I watched was I watched uh, Watchmen on HBO and I thought it was fantastic. Um, just as a show, it's just a really visually amazing show. I don't really, I watch really good. Yeah. I don't watch anything anymore. I'll give you an example of the last <clears throat> four things my eyes have viewed that weren't what we're doing here with Sons of Anarchy. I watched, and this is over the course of the last few months because that's how little I watch. I watch, um, I watched The Shining because I think it's one of the greatest movies ever made. I watched all the president's men. Wow. Yeah. I watched. I haven't seen that in a long time. Apocalypse now. I'm in the middle of watching for the first time Genius. ever. Dead poet society. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah Tommy, Tom, Tommy Shulman won an Oscar. My good buddy, Tommy Shulman wrote that thing and won an Oscar. I mean, it's oh, just what? an incredible movie. That's Robin Williams. He's Robin Williams, greatest, man. That is best. Time. Yeah. Best. So I don't really watch a lot of TV. Megan watches like Ozark and, uh, and, uh, and Handmaid's Tale and all these things. And I, I just don't. Right. And, but what I do do is sometimes I sit in when she's watching them and I realize that a lot of them are high drama, but not a lot of comedy. Right. And then if you're going to get a comedy, you got to go watch comedy. But what I loved about this era of television, Sopranos, even Oz and the wire and all that, like there's some funny stuff happening in this heavy drama 
at Breaking Bad. And I feel like that, um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, listen, maybe somebody will correct me and write me and tell me, but I don't know if anybody's really doing that um, right now. And if they are, please tell me, because I want to watch the show where it's like, you know, maybe Ozark does do, I don't know. I don't watch any of them where it's high. Well, you, you know, what's interesting that you just said though, is that's who you are. Yeah. That's who I am. I yeah. love dark comedies. I love, I love dark and I love comedies. And if you have the luck to be on a Sons of Anarchy or a Breaking Bad or a Sopranos that has so much fucking humor and yet the pathos and the acting and the drama is at such a beautifully written level and you get lucky with the actors and the editing and the music, you have a hit show. This is why we are talking Reaper because it was a hit show. Yes. And it always will be. And they were lucky. Wendy O'Brien, God bless her. I mean, beautiful job. She cast you. She cast me. She cast Charlie. She cast Ron. All of us together and the guest stars. And you write stuff like this. And it's a show that had never been written before. Sons was very unique, right? Would you agree? Like, has there ever been a show like Sons before? Was there ever a show like Breaking Bad before? No. Was there ever a show like Game of Thrones for what that was before? I, I don't think so. There's always, there's always a click, a, a few clicks before it of something that's similar. So The Shield had elements of Sons and Sopranos had elements of Sons. I'll give you um, that. Yeah, breaking without bad. the bikers though, without sure, the biker of course. club. So but, there's no, but no, no, clicks. No. Yeah, yeah. There's clicks of it that are in there, right? Mad Men had there. What I what I've said, and we said this on past episodes. You're diving into a world that you would never go into ever in your life again. But again, you just brought something up that this is really interesting to me because I've been really looking at actors like this too. Um, we said recently on one of the shows, like Daniel Day Lewis. You know, a lot of people say greatest living actor. But here's where I'm going to counter that. Sure doesn't do comedy. Philip Seymour Hoffman, someone who I think is one, you know, the greatest actors to ever live, did both. Incredible at comedy, incredible at drama. Just go watch The Master and go watch Boogie Nights or go watch Along Came Polly or go watch whatever, whatever you want to watch. Um, go watch Doubt and go watch, you know, anything. To me, doing both Robin Williams, we just talked about him, at a high level, certain people don't. Certain people just do drama and certain people just do comedy. Certain people do both. That to me is now what I'm looking at as I get older in this game and I'm going, yeah, they might be amazing at going into that deep, dark place, but can they make you laugh? And then I'm like, that person might make you laugh, but can they make you cry? Right? Uh, I, I, I mean... Till the cows come home, I will continue to be amazed when I get so lucky enough to be offered comedy roles because I love comedy more than anything, but I give good creep. I play good bad guys. I understand it. I'm not afraid to fail. I, the meatier, the better. I get all that. But man, oh man, even in Bad Blood, the, the big show I did for Netflix yeah. and Rogers up in Canada here, I would constantly look for comedy in all this drama because I always felt and I still feel and I always will that if you can mix them both and I'm talking I'm not talking stand up I'm not talking no. oh let's put a wig on I'm just talking shit like there was a little scene in Bad Blood where uh, Reggie my, 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 my nephew it's near the end now it's all getting he wants to play basketball and the line wasn't written like this and I said I don't got the right shoes like I had I just don't got the right shoes otherwise I'd kick your ass but just that little bit gave the audience a little <laughs> Like yeah. It was just Give on the thread. Reprieve, just uh, reprieve. Something before, yeah, just something. So that's, that's, that's what you do so well on this show, Theo. Is you. And that's, and that's what I, and again, I know that it's so hard for someone to mix that bolt. So that's why when people even recommend shows to me, I'm just like, if it doesn't have like a lightness to it, even if it's like super dark, just, I can't, I, I just can't, I need, I can't just be, I can't watch, you know, it's like certain things you can only watch once. Like I'm not going to go, you know, watch, you know, uh, Requiem for a Dream, which is like one of the hardest films to ever watch on the regular because I get it. I saw it once. It's a brilliant film, um, but I'm um, good. I got beat up by that, you know? And, and there's a lot of films like that that are just like so heavy. Yeah. The ones you can have fun with and have heaviness. So that's why I think Sons has that. And in this episode, we're really kind of doing that at all these little turns. So we have... Uh, 
this is really funny. And this is how nuts my wife is. And this is why I love her. Uh, what's an anal rain dance? She like looked it up on Google. <laughs> Like, and all I, I didn't her, know where to go. I didn't know goes, where to go. She looks yeah. it up on Google, and all I hear her go is she goes, oh. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I, I, I still don't know what it is. I still didn't look it up, but they were doing that in the porn studios, in anal rain dance or whatever. I have an anal rain dance at this time, I think Luann says, or someone else. Yeah, it's perfect. But there it is. It's something I've never heard no of. No idea. I, it's probably good that I don't know what it is. And I was it like, <laughs> and uh, so then we get right into that. I'm a. I'm a crushing on Jax, Tara right there. We're going to set up this power play, right? Um, Clay came riding in for real on his bike, by the way. Did you notice that? Oh, yeah. I was there that day. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was in the scene. And did it just beautifully. And, uh, but I got to tell you, and Ron can sit right here beside me, and he won't remember this. But I remember being, because I was there the whole day, it was just beautiful to watch those two scrap and throw the brick through the glass. And God, it was mommy and daddy fighting. And the way I sat down on that bike with, with Maggie Siff and just kind of pushed her off a little bit. And, but being close to her was kind of fun for me because I never am with Tara, you know, take. But the thing that I remember was an odd choice for me was Ronnie never took his helmet off. Oh, I have it written right here. It's a no-no. It's a big no-no, by the way. And I... I, I remember protecting him riding all the time and protecting because he's so freaking brilliant as Clay. But I was very, very, there came a time where he would just go get the fuck, like picking his bike up or helping him out. He just, get, he, didn't want, he didn't want help anymore. He wanted to do it and good for him. But that day I remember going, Pearl, you, you got to take your helmet off. He goes, no, I don't. I said, okay, but. You, Can I tell you, you why got, I didn't? Can I tell you why I didn't? Please, I'd love okay. to know why. Uh, and again, uh, you, you, you were riding prior to Sons of Anarchy. You had ridden. My whole life. Okay. As someone, we all know the story about me. I had the motorcycle license, but I hadn't ridden in eight years. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to ride dirt bikes when I was young, but very different because they were like little 80s and sprays yeah. and elites yeah. and all that. Okay. Now you're on this 600 pound bike. You're coming in. You got to hit a mark. You got to get off. I understand why he wore the helmet. Cause I wrote big, no, no helmet. No, no. And, and, and so many people have been guilty over the seasons of doing scenes with a helmet on Ron probably being number one. Not me. Not okay. one time. Okay. Go ahead. Here's why the more comfortable you are on a bike, you pull up, you get off, you get the kickstand down, you shut your engine, you get off. But man, when you're trying to beat the clock and you're nervous, you're pulling up, a lot of times the, oh. bike, the bike like stalls, right? The bike stalls, it shuts off. You didn't click it into neutral. You didn't shut your key. The bike's still on. You kick your kickstand down and you got to get into that scene, right? And you get up and you're just like, I just got to get into it. And you still have your helmet on because that's the last thing that, but if you're comfortable, as I got more, com I can do anything after season two, three, where I'm like, oh, I could ride up. I could, you know, come in. I could take my helmet off while I'm riding. I could do, but in the beginning, you're freaking out. So I know the reason he was wearing his helmet is because he just wanted to get off the goddamn bike and he just wanted to get the kickstand down. And he, I doubt he even turned the, that's key. probably, that's probably very, very true. I, I never thought of that because I, all I saw was he had plenty of time to whip that freaking helmet off and throw it on the ground. He never, we never saw him ride out of there. Yeah. It's just, it's just like, it's just, let's get into the scene. And he was hitting a mark, pulled up himself, put that fucking kick and he just got off his horse and he just started talking. Mm -mm. That's exactly what happened. So there was a moment in there where something happened. <laughs> and tell me if I was maybe reading this wrong, but after Clay goes to put his hands on Gemma and she obviously has the very physical, Oh my God. And response, know, the, the Don't trauma, touch me the trauma that. from, from the first yeah. episode. Yeah. Jax gives Clay a look. Is the look like, do you beat my mom? Was that like the look he was looking I, at him? For? I don't, I don't, I, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think so. I, I, I don't remember that look to tell you the honest truth. I just remember the lot was going on in that scene with Gemma and Clay. We were all just peripheral, me and Tara. And then Charlie came out and it was just, I, I don't remember that, but I, I don't, I don't know. Good for you for noticing. I'm Jax not sure. Jax looked at him like when she freaked out and Clay was like, kind of had like this look of like, I didn't do anything. And Jax looked at him and I was like, oh, does he think, and this just, 
even more sows the seeds of dissent. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, here they, now it's like, now it's something with his mom and, and he already doesn't like the guy. And so, so I was just watching that. It's not just Gemma Clay. Everyone's there. No, it's, it's, no, you're, you're, you're right. No, you're right. You're right. It just is, it's a, it's a big combination now of so many things that are adding to this spicy pot of Clay and Jax not getting along. That's just another one. So then we're in the garage and we're talking about uh, this whole thing with the, and I forget what Zobel's crew called. They're like a white nationalist. Crew. Oh, I, who could fucking care less. I who really cares? don't remember, but, but they're in the just garage. bad people. Bad people. We're in the garage. We're talking about them. And here's what's funny. There is what some might call a cobweb or a spider web from a past character. Me. When I was in the original pilot, pre-Kim Coates, pre-Tig, my character was explained to me as a hacker, a computer hacker. Yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember you telling me that way back in the day. Who used to drink tons of Jolt Cola. So he was always like, <laughs> like very like ready to go, right? And in that scene, Red Bull up your ass yeah, like, all <laughs> day <laughs> long. Right. And, and you see me in the garage when I'm laying down the maps and all that and talking about this guy, Zobel, and my intel that I had gotten from, you know, being the hacker who hacks into everything. I have a well, Clay jolt, asked you to do all that stuff. He asked I you have to a jolt cola in my hand. Oh, wow. And you got like, rid of all that shit. You got rid yeah, of that stuff. And I was gone. Yeah. Oh, isn't that funny? Yeah. So it's funny I because he went the other way. He, you know, he started, I think, um, a Juice became like a pothead and was doing like, no, but you, but no, you, you had that cleaning stuff out. You did that the whole cleanse shit. Juice cleansing. was, clean, was cleaning, cleaning himself out. He was all yeah, clean now. That's why I'm so skinny oxies. looking. Like, yeah. yeah, he was not on the jolt. He was going no. the other way. And there was a shot just before that scene, Theo, where the camera came along all our bikes. Mm. They were so new. So like new. that was the third show, uh, like show sixteen of ninety two. And mine was the only bike, Tig's bike's the only bike that ever survived all seven seasons, by the way. But even my bike was no, so... No, I had my bike. At the end? Same one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Juice's bike survived right horrible. to the end? Horrible. Yeah, horrible. Oh, good for you. Yeah, Lowrider Classic. Didn't know that. 03 Lowrider Classic. Still have it. Oh, no, but from the show. Yeah, we all got same one the whole time. I lost my bike for a minute, and I drove, remember, we'll get to it, when I drove the gold... Uh, the speckled gold one that everybody's the gold in front of me. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh, yeah. that was yours. That was Juice's bike. We gave you that bike. We picked it up for you. It was like a pre. It was like it was a filler because mine had gotten in an accident. Yeah, that's right. The gold. Yeah, that's and right. Made Good memory. Me. Yeah. Anyway, I just the bikes look so freaking new. And also, that that cop car, that truck that Hale drives. Yeah, it's great. Can I have? Can I have that? It's amazing. I'd love to know where that. Should is. I call Johnny and find out where that? I mean. What a great truck. Yeah, how come no one... I would love it because we lost that. We lost it in season two. Well, we lost it when we lose him, and we'll talk about that when that happens. Gone. That he's truck was big, gone. He's got the biggest show on television right now, Yellowstone. Yeah, he's doing it's really crazy. well. It's crazy. Taylor. It's crazy. Taylor Sheridan. It's crazy. Okay, so uh, I wrote this down. I don't know what it um, pertains to. Bobby was a bit of a mediator in the early seasons, and what I mean right. was... He was like the guy who was like, I'm going to give you some yogi advice. Here's what you should do. I don't play a side here. I'm not team Jax. I'm not team clay. I'm the guy who's going to tell you it straight. I'm the mediator. Right. Is that how he was in the beginning? Not only is that the, ex ex that, that is the truth, but Bobby was the only character in all of sons that had clay's ear, Jax's ear. Tig didn't. I didn't have Jax's ear. No. Chibs didn't have Clay's ear. You were Juice. I was Ro oh, Opie was just, at this point, the walking dead. He just wants to kill everything. He's just yeah. so lost. Bobby, when he gets out of prison, thank God, because now he can be in Clay's ear and Jax is here and fix the club. Help fix the club. Gemma is trying to help fix the club because she's got Jax's ear. She's got Clay's ear, but she's the matriarch. Bobby's just like, he's, he's part of the club, man. So no, he was, 
integral in those early yeah. trying to keep us together scenes, media. Yeah, and I, I, he really was, and I, and I noticed that, and I was like, oh, that's just just watching the way he spoke, and him and Jack's like sharing that joint, you know, when they're going over the bookkeeping, and then just the way he would talk to him was very like calming, and it was really good. Really um, good, and 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 one more thing before you move on, are you finding it weird? And you're about to go back to work any second now. Mm -hmm. And I just finished a couple weeks ago. This sharing of joints and sharing of cigarettes and deep kissing. And Crazy. We're, in a, we're in a new world now of it's trying to figure it, it all, trying yeah. to figure it all out with these COVID rules and being yeah. safe and as safe as we possibly can. And it's going to be a very uh, small steps taken. I in used to, when I, when I smoked cigarettes, I used to like share cigarettes. So when if someone was like, yo, let me have a hit, I'd give them my cigarette. All the time. I was never a huge pothead. I used to smoke pot a bunch when I was young, but it was never for me. It just didn't work. I used to get super paranoid. But I remember everybody would share blunts and share All the time. joints. And you, All that's the time. just what you did. Um, those days are far over, right? I mean. Uh, they are right now. Anyways, it's just it's unique for us to go back and it look at a unique. show from ten years ago and they're sharing joints and going, oh, that doesn't happen anymore. I gotta tell you, and maybe it's maybe it's just anything. Like maybe it's just because my life is so different. I just find it fascinating watching people smoke cigarettes now. Like it's just like crazy to me. Like it's just so crazy. Like I and I still have friends that smoke, and every time they do it, I'm like, why wow, you still smoke cigarettes? Like you know, you know, like it's. Really I don't. Weird. I don't hardly. I hardly know anyone really that I hang with that smokes cigarettes like a lot. Like, oh, I, I do. I know, you know, you know, some of my friends and you know, the one who does like a chimney, but it's like, it's love crazy. him to death. Me too. But it's, it's fascinating to me because at the same time, I think I'm also envious. Like, I'm like, wow, you just don't care. You're just like, Hey, I'm going to smoke cigarettes and fuck it. Right. And then there's these incredible human beings. I'm not one of them that can like, Oh, let me have a cigarette. And then six months later, have another one. Like what? Like that is mind blowing to me. Like, how do you just. Well, I did that. All, I, I did that all the time. Mind blowing. I, I would, I would smoke on sons when I finally started and I mind just blowing. wouldn't touch one for six months and I have a couple more. And, yeah. Mind blowing. So, okay. So now we get into um, juice going undercover for the meth buy, which is so funny with the hat. And the and the thing, and I get to actually act for a second, and I look like a UFC. No, but see, there. those those are some of my favorite scenes because it's Juice acting, Juice. Yeah. So you got Theo playing Juice playing exactly. this guy, hysterical, with his lumberjack shirt on, and you got the thugs, the chipmunks, the the jackals behind the truck, ready to start. I'm, come on, go ahead. And it's just like, and he's trying to be like a meth head and I'm trying to do my thing. And that kid, that was the kid from Fast and Furious. I forget his name. He's a really good actor. Uh, he, oh, good. He played the guy who you stomped on. Um, but again, I remember that scene like it's yesterday. It's so weird because it's so long ago. And I remember like being there. Those, uh, and then he has the white supremacist guys behind him earlier when Opie and, and, uh, and uh, Half Sack were there, right? And then we bring them behind. Yeah, half, half, half sex. I'm good with the crowbar, but maybe we should wait till we get the club behind right. us. This and, is... that's, and that's when we had the scene with the Joe Cole and all that. But you guys take him behind the trunk and you're like stomping on his, on his gonads. You know what? On his, his yeah, you know what? Yeah. And um, he gives it up. He gives up the house, right? He gives up the meth place. Um, those scenes, that was me, you, Opie? Yeah. And sack, so it was us four. Uh, you know, uh, who, who what? Who go to the house? Who were no, doing who, the beat up? Beat the guy up. I think it was Chibs. I think it was Chibs, me, Ryan, and you. I think it was the four of us. I don't remember. We just. I think so. I just saw okay. it last night. But but again, <laughs> we have so many of those that we yeah. we yeah. we forget. So then he tells us the house now. So here's one of my favorite um one of my favorite Gemma lines. Gemma and Tara. Ima pulls up with Jacks on the bike. Got to be one of the best lines ever written in the show. They think he's free dick. Got to educate. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Has Jeff said a better line ever? Got to educate. I never even heard that before. <laughs> and like, then Tara's on. response of like, you want me to fight her? Like, <laughs> what? My cat fight days are over. Like what? And, but she says it. She says it like back in Charming, man. She, that's why she can duke it out. It's coming up because 
And then that bathroom scene with Charlie, we'll get to it in a we'll minute. Get to that, yeah. Come on. Come on. But watching the women him ride in the up show. with Ima. Yeah, watching him ride up with Ima. They're both looking out. And he the gives you a little peck. He gives her a little peck. Yeah. Come on. You gotta and she says, are you okay with that? And I'm like, wow, there it is, right? Like, there's there's rules to the game, even with them. Like, you know, there's rules to it, but they can't get this close, and you can't do this. And you better do something, because if they don't know that you got him and he, you don't claim him, you boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, wow, I'm fascinated and riveted by that scene and the way Jem is – I'm just fascinated by the freeness of Gemma, like just that character and how she is. Um, so yeah, now we have this great stuff going on between Hale and Arkin, uh, uh, Zobel's character, right? I just, um, I just wrote, I just wrote it down, and I, I got I just got to say, please. that speech Whew. that Zobel gives Hale Whew. is so well. Let me read it exactly. It's so well written and frightening. Adam Arkin is so amazingly calm and zealous and unrelenting in this part. He is all of it. And what he says is like the Bible to him, his Bible, his fucked up vision of whatever that is and what he believes. And he says it was such calm truthfulness from him to Hale. I'm... I'm so glad I'm rewatching these shows. Oh my God. It it was just, and it's helping. The funny thing is, again, whenever I watch, people don't realize realize this, no matter how long you do this. You watch really good acting and you go, that was a fucking great choice. Wow. And you give it up in your head and you go, wow. Like I'm watching him do that scene and I'm watching, you know, Hale's, Taylor's reaction and I'm watching. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Calmness. And I'm like, and his ethos, what he believes and watching him convince Hale. And, and, and I'm like, this is, it's fucking great writing, but it's fucking great acting. Right? It's just such good acting. Right. And, and again, I guess maybe I'm, I'm used to seeing a lot of bad acting recently that I'm like, fuck, this is good acting. right? So yeah. good. So that's an incredible scene. It's terrific acting. Um, I have written here and I don't know why. Oh, Luann, is that the Luann and Bob? Yeah. So, so, so I must say, right from there, again, the juggling, the juggling of the writing. That's why there's writers' rooms, people. That's why they have months in the writers' rooms. To what's the pace like? What, what, what are we feeling as if we do it right? Where do we need to go to then come back to it? Like where? That's what. That's what Sutter and his team had down in this show. We go to what is arguably to this point, the most important blow job of this show. <laughs> here, here is Luann figuring out from Bobby's honesty, his honesty of what she's done by skimming off, not just a little, a lot of money. You owe the club a lot of money. Dendry is so beautiful in this moment of panic of shutting a door calmly, of wanting, uh, I'll give it back, I'll give it back, I'll give it back. And none of it's working. And she just goes, have you ever seen my movies? Mm -hmm. And before you know it, she's on and he's going, no, no, you're auto, there's a prison clause. Like how, like, it's beautiful, a prison clause. He's in prison, there's a clause, we can get through this. And Bobby, before you know it, he's thrown down in the chair and the rest is history. And she has, and she she references that she has a specialty. And this is what I fucking love about great writing. Wait, she references she has a specialty. And later on in the episode, later on the episode, he comes out limping. And Clay goes, you okay? And he goes, yeah, I just, uh, like he says, something like an old accident or something. And you realize that whatever she did, that, to, that was he it. And fucking walk. No, he can't even walk. No, come on. Think about that. That is amazing. Amazing. So she says, like, his specialty in this dude at the end of the episode can't walk. That is fucking amazing. Okay. Good for so, you for picking up on that. Yeah. So uh, clearing the house and then blowing up the house. I remember okay. that scene. I'll never forget it. And, oh, I, and, I, and, I, and I have to tell you, Theo, that any time there was like an explosion or a lot of shit was going to go down, we had the best pyro guys in the business on that show. We'd go out to that Disney ranch outside of LA mm-hmm. and blow up shit all night long, right? 
I remember running back to the camera to check shit out because Opie's double was going to come out of that house pretty close to it. Right. And we were behind, we were like four chipmunks. Remember we had those toques on those Canadian yeah. toques on yeah. All, or, you, me, Charlie and Ronnie, just there we were. And I would keep, and, and we just looked like, like chipmunks, like behind the, these, this piece of wood, like a little and I, logs. And I thought this looks really silly, but here we go. How did it look to you? It worked, eh? Did it work? Yeah, it worked. Okay. I remember being freezing. It was freezing. So cold. For I us. remember being a Friday type thing where it was like, you know, two, three in the morning or something. And, you know, you're doing that thing and you don't, you, time is irrelevant. Everything takes a long time when there's explosions. Like they got to really, you know, and we're on location. Please. So, so Please. you're just like. You know, and, and, and then when there's explosions, like we were all smoking cigarettes back then. It's like, you can't smoke within a certain. No. You can't be near no. anything. So no. just always, everybody's moving around. It was freezing. Um, and again, <laughs> you're worried about like, there's, they're doing this big explosion and we have all this and everybody, the bravado, the machismo coming out, like clear, clear, clear. <laughs> Right, and it's like, oh God, here we go. Everybody's in Delta Force mode. No, we all went to Black Hawk down for a moment all oh, night long. Man. Everybody, clear, back it up. Clear, back, back it up. Get away the wire. Yeah, so, so I just remember that scene so much. Um, okay, so this is a great scene that's coming up right after that. Clay and Gemma have this scene where he's basically saying, if we don't hang out, I want to hang with you. If you don't want to, there's a rap party at the porn place. I'm telling you without telling you that if we don't, because it's been a month or whatever, if this ain't, if we ain't getting busy, I'm going to get busy. And she knows what he's saying. Correct? 100%. 100%. And what I liked about before that scene, it was Tig who actually said, go talk to her. Oh. Go talk to her. It was Tig who actually said, enough's enough. You, me. Everybody who's been noticing this offness of Gemma, right. offness. You say to him, go it's talk me to who her. said, go talk to her right now. She's in the little, that beautiful little office that we all did shit in. Go. And he does. He go. And that references because you say you hate when mommy and daddy fight. Like you don't like when they're at odds with each other. Hate it. Hate it. Hate mm. it. So and you it tell him to go talk and then he goes talk. And he, and he does. And then, and then very good point about the whole porn thing. I mean, the complications of the, of the Gemma and Clay relationships are full and sad right now. That's what I had written down. So, yeah. And All right. Again, we're getting near the again, end. Now, now we start getting to that point where now Unser and Hale aren't trusting each other. Hale never trusted Unser, but now Unser doesn't trust Hale. It's like the shoe flips and you see it outside that yeah. fire when they're outside the meth house. Yeah. Yeah. And didn't, when did Zobel walk in to talk to Hale in the office. Was that Early. last week or this? No, that was this week. It was this week in the episode. And, and the answer comes in and goes, hey, who's, who's, who's this? this? Oh, Cigar who's King. Hey, how oh, are Cigar you? Oh, Cigar King. Hey, how you doing? And then the answer has a look at Hale and Hale doesn't say, fuck all. It's just remarkable. And then, yeah, Clay, those... and then Clay says, have you met this guy? He owns a yeah. cigar shop. And he's yeah. like, that guy. That guy was Yeah, just... I did. I just, yeah, the, yeah. That, and that they all guy. start piecing it together. But, and again, I'm really excited to see how this all plays out with Hale because it's funny how Hale didn't come back and get the warrant and didn't call it in and told Jax there was nothing there. And again, I, I, again I'm like a fan. I want to know what happens um, and why he didn't. And know. we're going to, and we're going to find out. And we're going to find out. So, so you have that. Then, um, and then, you know, here we go. Porn party, full swing. Full Honey. Swing. And tense and sexy when Kristen gets in Maggie's face. I mean, come on. Just right in her face. Then Tara is in the bathroom. Jax walks in and she screams, in a minute. Like, she's not even in a minute. Like, Jax is, what? I mean, come on. How much fun would that have been for Maggie to play all that shit? So I don't really remember filming that porn studio night. And I, the reason I don't is because I'm looking at it now and I was looking back on it. There was a lot of shit going on in the background. I wanted nothing to do with it. Okay. Tig, maybe, that's, maybe I just kept leaving. No, it. no. We, you, you and I, it was a long week, long, long week. 
And it's just going to be another beautiful mm-hmm. montage of shit going down. Yeah. And I, rem- I remember saying specifically, I want to sit down because it's going to be six hours of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I did not want to be the wild cat in the room. No. I sat down. I sat down and I was, because I already had my other moment in the last episode of my gal. And that was fun to do. And fun, you know, the, some, uh, when it's, like you said, two people, three people. But those big scenes, yeah. I just want to sit down. Because it's no, going to be a long no night. To actors, yeah, no to actors or anyone who's in the background of a big scene and you're a main player. When you're a main player and you're in the background, they're going to film you, right? Even if, even if for a second. Even for a second. But what you want to do is you want to stay stationary because then if the camera's in a completely other place, you can leave. If you're moving all the time and you're crossing around the room, you're going to have you're to You're in it all, all night long, long and for, you don't for, want yeah. to do that. The yeah. payoff is, isn't quite as big. Don't smoke sure. cigarettes. <laughs> stay in one place. Don't do a lot of action. Just get the fuck out of no, there. No, I was with my gal sitting down, not even necking, just sitting there talking. I don't know where. And I that was. was it. I couldn't even find You were in there. You were in there. You were on a couch somewhere. Okay. So then uh, full rock song at the end. That was like a rock rock song they had at the end. Um, Jax's ass is in full swing. We're getting. I want your love hardcore. Yeah, no, seriously. Yeah, go ahead. Jackson's ass in full swing and Tara yeah. starting to turn into the biker badass. She gives that. I look. love it. I have the same thing. I said, now we get to feel Maggie's fighting her cat fighter past tough girl from charming. Wow. Like, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Tara and Jack's the love story through cat fighting. I mean, she get ready. that look of like, there's that turn, right? You start to see that little turn when someone's going to start not being like you almost, you know, it's like as life goes on, maybe some things happen and you lose a little of that like humanity that you had. And she just loses that a little more in that <laughs> moment. And she becomes like a little more aggressive and you go, wow, that's, that's the arc of a character, right? So here we are, we got Jax's, ham cheeks in our face and then we're gonna move up to her face and uh amazing it's amazing uh and and the rock song and it's like that is vintage sons of anarchy that's it vintage right vintage and did did we not end this episode theo on Kristen walking in yes. and then yes. tara's face yes. on her yes going my man he's my fades man. out to the reaper he fades out to the reaper i mean Boy, oh boy. When the editing is good on this show, it's fucking priceless. It's fucking I just said this last, last, last image of Tara staring at Ima. Priceless. Priceless. Can't say it. You didn't show us anything. But yes, that, that, I agree. <laughs> that literally I saw nothing on that page. You got to go. There you go. Priceless. Did you see it? <laughs> I did my notes on my phone. You do them actually. I mean, I guess I'm a little techie. I'm here. a di- I, no. I'm a you're tech. You're genius. You're a dinosaur. Yeah. No, no. Like, you you got me into Twitter. You were you're the one who got me into all this shit. Yeah. I have to have my daughter help me out. And my wife. I don't. I, I'm a dinosaur, man. I read it all down. Six four four. Um. All right. Well, oh. listen. While we're here, let's just tell these people really quick. Um. The way we're picking these episodes is we're picking them off in Apple Podcasts. Once you subscribe in the reviews, just write what episode within seasons one to three that we haven't done that you want us to do. And we're giving you a shout out and we're doing that episode. That's literally how simple this is. That's how easy it is. We are doing nothing except sitting here talking about what we don't know. You guys are the ones doing the work. So pick the episode. Tell us what you want to see in those reviews. We're going to pick them which we just did here this week, last week, every other week before it. And then we say it. So, so uh, Theo, cause you run in this thing. I'm just your sidekick. Do we know what we're doing next week yet? No, we're going to wait till the fans kick no, us in a bit. No, they have to kick in. Um, there are some really good ones that are up there that, uh, that I really think would be a super treat. And there's also one that I selfishly really want to do. Okay. Okay, good. I look forward to it. Yeah, and and just I'll just say that I think, I think, I think we're gonna start getting into some season three and season three. Oof. That's Ireland. Ooh, it is Ireland, and I have yeah. stories about that, which Me we'll too. talk about when Me we. Me too, and I'm and I'm very I'm very open when I tell people that I did not love the uh, season, but the season finale of 
season three. Might be the best one might ever. Might be the best episode we've ever done. So might to be. me, it didn't even matter because I love that episode so much. So I do think that now that we've done a bunch of ones and we've done some twos that I want to I wanna start jabbing into season three a little just to kind of see, because you remember we changed the opening music. We changed, like there was some crazy shit going on. Sherlock, I'm Watson. You're Sherlock Holmes. I'm just your Watson. You let me know. So let's I'm here see what you. people say. Look how, look how good I still look. I'm 97 years old. Will you be old. in the forest next time? Because I'm not going to be. I'm going to be I don't think I will totally be. I think I'm different. back in my house. All right. Well, I'll be somewhere totally different. So I love you. Get see ready. You I love you too. Reaper yeah. Reviews. Say hi to Reaper all your people.